Hello and welcome to the first ever Block to the Path project checkpoint thingy. Um, so this is a kind of concept that I came up with uh, yesterday uh, while I realized that we're actually coming up on the uh, first anniversary or when you're watching this it is the first anniversary uh, of this project meaning we started making this uh, recreation on January 1st 2022 Reeves and I um, and it's now January 1st 2023 so uh, I thought it'd be cool to kind of go over the progress that we've made and talk a bit about how it all started and uh, what we hope to do in the future. Um, this video is pretty much unscripted, although I do have a giant script here. I script all of my videos. Um, so there's going to be cuts in the videos where I quickly look at my script. Um, because I thought maybe I could just read this read this completely off on the script. But um, then I realized that it's not really that easy to edit. And I don't really have much time until January 1st. So I'll just do it off script for now. So what I want to talk about today is basically how it all started, first of all. So we could go into this Discord server. So this is the Discord server that we use for the private, uh, like a private Discord server for the testers and the developers. Um, so uh, there's a lot of stuff in here that you really can't see because it's secret stuff. But um, I mean, it's not really much to hide right now. So the main thing I want to talk about here is the changes list. So this is a channel where I post my patch notes. Um, but I post everything I do here for each day. So as you can see, I tried to work on this multiple times a week. Uh, I worked on it yesterday. Uh, I did, I'm going to work on it today, uh, the day before. Then I did work so that I didn't work on 27th. And then I did work again. So this is pretty useful because you can basically see... Okay, on the 4th of November, he added the trap, the big trap. Yomo Medusa, the winder, the green spear soldier, and all these other soldiers soldier soldiers it's really easy for example to see that uh when you go all the way back to the beginning which should be january one second there we go um that the first enemy i added was the um wait, wait the green soldier there we go so the green soldier of course is the first enemy i added it's <laughs> the easiest because it's basically just a fucking zombie with a retexture that hasn't been added yet um and you can see that reeves did post updates here he built the layout for kakariko village which is now completely gone since we uh made a completely new overhauled version of the map which you can see in my newer videos um so that was all uh, a waste i also added moldorm here um i spent six hours on this which is true and i ended up scrapping the entire thing because it was way too buggy um so um, I actually recoded him like a couple months ago uh, at the bomb item. There's a lot of stuff here that actually got removed, meaning I did a lot of the stuff um, for nothing, but that's just because I was learning. And uh, after a while, I realized that the way I implemented him before was terrible and I could do way better. So yeah, I to see like the side quests. Uh, I don't know why we tried to do imposters. It was kind of a joke. Um, now they're actually Koroks, so like in Breath of the Wild, you're going to be able to find Koroks. Uh, new find, new side quest, find Snowy, yeah, this is probably not going to come back. Um, Zora's Flipper, there you go. So as you can see, I kind of stopped doing um, enemies at this point and moved over to items because items are just way easier, at least for me, and I had much more experience with them from my previous projects. That, of course, didn't last forever because if I go onto my big sheet here, I'm going to go over this later, this is the sheet that I use for the items. As you can see, we have um, three columns with checkboxes, one for the item being implemented, so like the texture, one for the functionality, and one for the sound effects. Um, so as you can see, basically all of them, except for like dungeon map and compass, have been added as an item. And basically all of them also have uh, functionality, except for the flute and the book of Medora, because I need like, for the flute, I need like a flute boy thing built. And for the Book of Medora, I need certain areas built that um, like let you read something in uh, Hylian. So I can't do that yet. Uh, and also the Big Key and the Smoky, I have actually implemented those. So I should probably take that off. So after I finished basically all of these items, I had to go back to enemies. Now, how do I code an enemy? I'll let, let, let me walk you through the process real quick. So this is, I use a Visual Studio Code, which you probably know if you're a programmer. Um, this is my Minecraft coding workspace. I also have a, uh, a workspace for my other things, like uh, I'm learning uh, JavaScript, C, Node.js, Python. I use Visual Studio Code because it 
one it looks professional and two there's this very cool extension there's this very cool extension uh where is it it is called datapack helper plus which as it says heavy language features for minecraft java edition and what this means is that uh well first of all if you open any of these files let's go into the summoning folder uh, i'll take um armos as you can see it gets color coded and it also gives me errors for example for this it wants me to put it in quotes which isn't actually necessary in minecraft so i just don't do that but yeah this is really useful for like debugging and stuff um and i think it just looks cool and they actually updated it yesterday the colors were like completely different and they also have uh co colors for like the comments now which is really cool so um anyway this is the summoning folder so this is a folder inside of my data packs function folder which means these are all commands that i can uh, run in the game and what this command does is it summons an armos enemy so every enemy pretty much every enemy is comprised of two separate entities so there's an armor stand which holds the actual model uh, and the model is just made in block bench it's just in uh, a retextures or remodeled carrot on a stick um and then there's the zombie so um, the zombie here acts as a hitbox, so the actual armor stand, it can't really um, calculate damage properly, so we put a zombie in there, make it invisible, and let the player damage the zombie, and then when the zombie dies, we also kill the armor stand, and we play the death animation stuff. So that's how basically every enemy works. Um, and the zombie can also um, do some of the AI. For example, if you have an enemy like the soldiers, they don't have like custom AI like armors just jumping up and down, um, the soldiers just use the normal zombie AI, so we just say that the armor stand can constantly teleport to the zombie's position. But for armos, we want the zombie to constantly teleport to the armor stand's position, because the armor stand is getting like that uh, hard-coded bouncing uh, treatment. So that's in a nutshell how it works. Um, and then there's this. This is my linking system. I use uh, a custom system to link the armor stand and zombie in this case together. So that they know like um, who they're linked with because for example if there's multiple armors they have to know which zombie is uh, connected to with ar which armor stand and there's one score here and they basically just get the same score and that's how they can find each other so that's the actual summoning but what about the actual movement well there's this function called enemy tick so this is a function that gets ran by every enemy and it goes through every enemy's tag so for example we have armos so it checks if the entity is an armos, and if it is, then it runs this function, enemy tick slash armos, every single tick, so that's 20 times a second. And this is basically just the armos code. If you go into here, this is all the code that armos runs every tick. So already you're probably thinking, isn't this a fucking terrible idea? Why is one enemy running 82 commands, uh, not really 82 because it's empty spaces, but like 70 commands every single tick, so 70 commands, 20 times a second that's already like 1400 commands a second well the thing is if i summon like 20 of these um then the game will still be fine i think minecraft doesn't really care how many commands you run uh, and there could definitely be like optimizations here um <clears throat> for example i can just see that um all of these for some reason are the exact same thing um so i could just do like 7.10 why did I do that? Let's just change it right now. Um, let me show you. So we'll do 7 dot dot 10. So now it just does it for 7 up to 10. Okay, so that's one thing. Oh, as you can see, it's also the same thing here. What? I am so fucking terrible at coding. Why did I do this? Uh, this is actually something that I have on my to-do list. I have to like go through every enemy and optimize the code. Uh, it's the same thing here. Why did I fucking do this? When we had too many enemies in the game, it did lag. And um, the reason for that is when an enemy is out of your render distance, Minecraft still knows that this enemy is there. So it will still check for this and it will still make that enemy run all of its like 70 functions every tick, 70 commands every tick. Um, but it won't do anything because if it's out of render distance, you can't modify it, you know? Um, so that was wasting a lot of resources. So what I did was if I go into my ticking function, this is another important function. Um, and basically the tick function gets run every tick. And yes, you're gonna cry about this. It's 400 commands that get run every every tick. Um, but this is all of the stuff that needs to get run every tick. Um, yeah, this is like if you have a Unity project uh, where you have like um, a loop that runs every tick. 
I'm sure this is fine. I think Minecraft can handle this. Um, there's a lot. There's also a lot of stuff that could be optimized here. Um, but yeah, why did I open Microsoft Teams? Basically, it um, runs a command at the player's position. So you know the player, and it looks for enemies that are outside of a 64 block radius. So that's pretty much out of render distance, and it adds the untick tag to them. Now, basically, what this means is that if an enemy has this tag, it will no longer run any of these commands. So it will stop doing that and it will save a lot of resources. Uh, now, as, you, as I told you before, most of these enemies have a zombie or like a silverfish tied to them. And if we were to stop running these functions, which like actually connect them together, then the silverfish or the zombie would just start running away. We don't want that. So we will also, in this untick uh, function, we will also add a no AI tag to that enemy, which will um, just make him stop any stop them from doing anything so then when they get back into the distance we add the retick and we just um, re-enable the entire enemy with this function so that's the system right and it works really well so that's gonna save our bots when we get to the actual game because there's gonna be a ton of enemies uh, in this 5000 by 5000 map that don't have to be like doing stuff because they're not visible so that's gonna save a lot of time progress right how is progress being made is it fast is it not fast so as you can see right here at the bottom which is right now um we are making a lot of progress at least i am reeves is actually building a lot of stuff right now but i'm making a lot of enemies and items that's that's actually because it's currently vacation you know it's it's the holidays it's um december the end of december we have uh new year's eve coming up tomorrow i already had christmas um, and I'm on school vacation because I'm 16 years old and I still go to school. So um, I have a lot of time, free time and vacation, even though I do work sometimes. I actually did work this Tuesday, but um, I like to keep my vacations free for the most part. Um, and as you can see, if I like, go back here, as you can see, it went from the 3rd of December to the 22nd. Because between that, I had my like two weeks of exams. So I didn't have time to do stuff. I, that's a lie. I did have time to do stuff. But um, when I was done with studying, I decided to just relax and not code. Well, so how far are we actually with the recreation? Well, in terms of the actual game, we're nowhere, okay? Like, I have a path built from Link's house to the uh, bridge that's supposed to be there. The bridge hasn't been built yet, the castle hasn't been built yet, so I can't really do anything there. Um, which is basically a problem right now where I have to wait until Reefs has time to build a castle. Because I can't build, so I have to constantly wait for him to do stuff. Uh, which is why I've been just coding enemies constantly. And I've, I'm like over, what is it, 114 enemies coded. It's insane. Because we only have like 13 of them modeled. Uh, but what can I do? I don't really have anything else to do. Uh, which is kind of getting annoying at some point. Um, but that's why I'm also working on other projects. Um, I'm just waiting on Reef. So anyway... Um, this is the entire list. So this is a big list that I think I constructed like a few months ago, which contains every single enemy. Um, it tells you uh, whether they've been coded, whether they've been modeled, whether the loot has been added, whether they have sound effects, and whether they have, um, you know, been featured in a devlog. Um, then here's their summoning ideas, IDs, which is basically if you go into like the summon folder I showed you before. Um, th these are the summoning ideas. And then there's also the original game. So most of these are from A Link to the Past because every enemy and boss in A Link to the Past will be here. Um, and the ones that actually haven't been done yet, these are all bosses, so that's too hard. Uh, and the ones here like uh, Rabbit Beam, for the rabbit, for the Rabbit Beam I need the Rabbit feature implement. For the Lightning Lock I need the Castle. For the Flying Tile I need a Dungeon. For the Cannon I need a Dungeon. For the Bubble Group I need a Dungeon. For the Zoro I have no fucking clue what a Zoro is. And we're also adding more enemies from A Link Between Worlds, which is basically a sequel. From the Adventure of Link, I added a Fiery Moa. Um, and Link's Awakening, and then we have Ocarina of Time. And I'm going through the list of every game's enemies, uh, so I'll probably add some more. Right now, as you can see, we have a total of 149 enemies that we want to add. It would be nice if we stopped at 150, but I doubt we're gonna do that. So there's probably gonna be an uneven number, I'm sorry. It's just like that. So what about the future of this project? Well, um, we are still not sure at all when we're gonna finish this. It's gonna take years, we know this. I'm ready for it to take years. Um, I'm really glad that people are watching this content. That really makes me happy. So uh, these are a bunch of shorts that I have scheduled. As you can see, I'm uploading a short every single week 
until April, um, which is insane because I just have so many shorts. Um, this video is premiering tomorrow, and I saw that there are actually comments. So here we have comments. Next, next, start building the free dungeons in the light world. It's not that easy, Johnny. Hell no. Um, <laughs> it's not that easy, Johnny. Come on. I can't build free dungeons for one video. No, it's not that easy to create free dungeons. I'm making a video about 10 items. 10 items took me like, I mean, about a month of work. Free dungeons? Well, first of all, Reeves has to build the entire dungeon. And for one dungeon, it'll probably take a couple weeks. Then I'll have to code all of the like features, music, uh, because I want my entire feature to be done before I show it in Deathlock. So I'd have to add the music, all the enemies, the entire boss as well. Um, that would probably take like a month. That's like almost two months for one dungeon. So in short, you want me to make a video um, with six months of work in, in it. And it's probably going to be way more. Um, so no, I'm sorry, we're not going to do that. Uh, I want to spread these out because as I said, this project is going to take years. So I want to make content about this for years, um, which, which might get stale after a while, but I could upload other things, and I do have another channel, um, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but my videos get watched pretty nicely, 92 views probably sounds like nothing for most people on this platform, but 92 views for me is a lot, um, so I'm really happy with that. Now, in the long term, to make this more efficient, we are going to have to start hiring people. Now, we're not going to hire anyone to code, because I don't really want anyone to help me with coding. And it's not because I have a massive ego. Um, I just like my own code, and my code is pretty much spaghetti code to anyone else. And I'm pretty sure that if someone else were to start coding in our project, uh, I would have no clue what they were writing, and I don't like that, because then I wouldn't be able to modify it. So, that would be terrible. But modeling and building, that's easy to do with people you hire. Um, now, we could technically like ask, ask some people to build and model stuff for free, which I'm sure there's a lot of people, maybe even in, uh, of my subscribers, who would want to model stuff for us. But I'm not really comfortable with just asking you to model something for free. Um, so I would pay you. But of course, the question is, where do I get that money from? Now, to be completely uh, humble, I have money, I know I, I work, so I have money, but that's not like the kind of money I'm gonna spend on a Minecraft, little Minecraft project. Um, I'd like to like spend the money on it that I earn from the project itself, which uh, if I show you my analytics, I'm completely fine with showing this by the way, I do not care. Um, in lifetime, I have earned a total of 9.93 euros, which if you convert it into dollars for you American viewers, that is a total of ten dollars um ten dollars is not a lot uh, it's like enough to i don't know um maybe i could just like hire one guy to make one model with this amount of money uh, so it's not a lot as you can see i did make like three euros on one day july 1st is when we announced the project um but i earn like five cents a day it's fine um i'm sure that this will go up uh i'm trying to push these shorts out uh and i I have noticed that they are getting views, I think. Uh, let me see. This one has 144 views, which is, for me, really good. I mean, it's a short, so it has more views. But that's really good, and I'm also posting them on Instagram. Um, there we go, on Instagram. And I have seen that there are more followers now, because I'm posting these reels. Um, I have 49 followers, there you go. Okay, yeah, I did get... Did I get a comment? There's a lot of people watching these. That's really good. Comment to the creeper. What creeper, Logan? You can now throw this custom bomb item. Oh, the creeper. Oh, no. <laughs> so this is before I made the creeper invisible. You could still see the creeper when it was, like, creating the explosion. Yeah, let me just comment that. I have 49 followers. That's pretty all right. But the, the real stuff that you need from this is... You need them to go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Which I don't think a lot of them are doing right now. Um... This is what this is the wrong channel. What the fuck am I doing? It's not it's not even linking to the correct channel. What the hell what am I doing? Oh my god. It's currently linking to my main channel, which hasn't posted a video in like three months. That's not really okay, I'm I'm actually an idiot. What the fuck am I doing? 
Editing your links is only available on mobile. Fuck you, man. The best thing is that we get uh, money for any project, which would, which would be evenly split. Um, Reese is also making his own channel, which he would like invest that money into it, but that's also not fair. So it's a whole complicated thing. Now, what we have thought of is making like a kind of Patreon, um, where, for example, you could um, pay a certain tier. Like, there's a couple of tiers. Tiers. Um, and if you had like the first tier, you would be able to see sneak peeks and you would be uh, able to like, suggest features and stuff. At the second tier, you could maybe get your own enemy into the game um, and you could, you know, see video videos before they're published. And like the highest tier, maybe the person who pays the most or something, uh, they can get, get their own dungeon into the game. Uh, it's kind of inspired by like how Hollow Knight did their thing because they gave people their own enemies in dungeons and like parts of the game, areas of the game because they support the project, which is a really great idea, except for the fact that nobody's gonna buy that, at least not right now. With 1,186 subscribers, that's good, but I don't think there's anyone out there who, I mean, there's probably a lot of you who would want to buy it, but nobody out there who has the money, like, the, the will to spend their money on it, uh, which I completely understand, by the way, I don't want anyone to spend their money if they uh, don't have um, enough of it for themselves, but um, yeah, we're gonna have to figure this out in the long run um, because I just want a lot of these enemies to start getting modeled so I can make devlocks on them. It's, it's just really fun to see a feature when it's done. Like for example, all of these enemies that I've, um, all of these completed devlocks here, like for uh, this one's that this one that's coming up on uh, January 31st for Poe and Tektite. It's just really fun to see these enemies when they're completely finished, right? Um, so um, I'd love for more models to start getting made and for um, more builds to start getting made because I really just want to work on the actual game now. Um, but I have to wait. So that's the problem we're, we're like facing right now. So I'm going to end it here. Um, sorry for me rambling on for like half an hour. Uh, if you have any suggestions as to how we should start running this or just change anything, please let me know. Um, I'm always open to suggestions. So yeah, that's basically how how we've been doing. Um, I think we do want to get like done with this project in five years or something. That's the thing we've been joking about. But um, for now, I'm still having fun with it and I um, have a lot of time to do other stuff. So I'm really happy. Yeah, that's it for now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this longer uh, rambling video. Uh, and I will see you on January 31st. Thank you for watching and stay safe.